What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this video, I'll be taking you through a breakdown of all of the different graphic settings in Star Wars Outlaws so that you know exactly what you're getting out of the game. If you'd like to see an optimization guide that's much more condensed than this, you'll find one linked in the description down below. Starting off from the very top, the graphics quality preset. Obviously, the lower that you have your graphics options, the better performance you're going to be getting, and it's no different here. Between ultra and low, you can practically double your performance. I moved from about 44 on the ultra option all the way up to 72 on low with a reasonable similar step between each different option of about 10-ish FPS. But of course that is to be expected. This game does have a ton of options that we can granularly get into and we'll be doing that in just a moment. But of course the second major thing that you'll be playing around with for a huge boost in performance is going to be the upscaler. By default it should choose whatever's best for your system. If you've got an Nvidia graphics card it'll use DLSS or anything else it'll probably use AMD FSR. The default is quality and that gives you a good compromise between performance and looks and on the screen now you'll be seeing me flicking through each of the different options there's amd fsr3 dlss xcss and taa which is temporal anti-aliasing as usual taa is just generally blurry all over and you're going to get the best visuals from both DLSS and FSR. XCSS is still noticeably lacking, especially on the much faster performance options, so I definitely would recommend against using that, and rather use AMD FSR unless you have an NVIDIA GPU, in which case I'd recommend choosing DLSS. At the time of recording, frame generation wasn't enabled in the review copy, but of course, shortly after release, it should be, and I assume you can enable frame generation with any RTX 40 series plus when you have DLSS selected or on any GPU when you have AMD FSR selected, but we can only see that after release. You'll see a pinned comment with info about frame generation once it has released. That's a few days from now. Also, there's a couple of weird quirks about the upscaler that you'll need to know. There are three different main options. There's off, obviously, where it just uses your native resolution. Then there's biased and fixed. Fixed essentially works with your default monitor's resolution. If you're playing at 2K, it'll render your game at something smaller and blow it up to 2K. K. However, if you choose biased, it's biased towards 4K. So if you're playing on a 1080p monitor, it'll render it, let's say, 720. Then it'll bump it all the way up to 4K and compress it back down to 1080. So there's a little bit more legwork involved, but by upscaling to a bigger resolution, usually, and compressing it back down, you can get a ton of extra visual information as DLSS, FSR, and the rest just have a little bit more legroom to squeeze in a bit of extra quality and all of the little weird quirks usually disappear when you shrink it back down. So if you're playing at 1080p, bias is probably the best option for you to choose. However, of course, your performance will not be as good as choosing fixed. If you're getting fantastic consistent FPS throughout gameplay of let's say 80 or so, I'd recommend trying out biased to see if the overall visual improvement is worth an FPS cost. Into the numbers, everything performed pretty much similarly with the ultra quality, quality, etc. settings. DLSS seems to be the one with the least amount of options when it comes to quality, but it still performs fantastically. XCSS really struggles on the more performance side, and of course, TAA's overall blur all the time. DLSS and FSR work great at pretty much any option. Just keep in mind that native AA actually uses your normal default monitor resolution and applies anti aliasing using DLSS, FSR, or XCSS even TAA to make the world look a little bit better. This is probably the best anti-aliasing option that you can choose and I'm glad that they went with this. If you're going to be playing at native resolution I'd recommend having DLSS or FSR turn on and set to native AA for a generally improved game with very little performance impact at all. It's practically the same as having it off to begin with. If you need to play with upscaling I'd recommend choosing quality which is the default for this game otherwise probably balanced is as low as I would go. You can see performance numbers on the screen behind me. Jumping into the more granular options, at the very top we have Chromatic Aberration and Film Grain. Both of these options have practically no impact on performance. Chromatic Aberration only applies that red and blue shift to text that appears on your UI and not really anything else, and the Film Grain applies a general mask over pretty much everything, even the pause screen, and it just makes the game look a little bit more authentic to a film, and I'd say hides a few imperfections, just makes it generally look a little bit better. Just keep in mind, if you're recording with film grain enabled, it is going to take more power to encode into the same bitrate, as there's a lot more visual information happening at once. So if you're streaming to Twitch and things like that, your encoder will work a little bit harder, it may use a little bit more bandwidth, or use it in a different way, and it could improve how things work, as it has to work a bit harder to compress it a bit better. 
But anyways, that's outside of the scope of this video. Film green is a fantastic thing to have on. I think it looks great, but of course your opinion may differ. The rest of these settings, I'll jump around the menu, so just keep that in mind. It's more based on where I was in the world as I'm recording things bit by bit, checking off the list of every one of the options. Distant shadows are supposed to have a big visual impact, as you can see in the in-game options. However, of course, I didn't really see that in practice. No matter where I stood and turned it on or off, there wasn't too much of a visual impact, and there was very minimal to no performance impact as well. Volumetric Clouds has a small gain in performance each step you drop down, and it just makes the clouds a little bit more smooth and a little bit blurrier. The difference really is small, it's about 1-2ish to -ish percent or FPS, so it's really not too much to worry about. You can set it to low and forget about it, or higher, it doesn't really matter all that much. Particle Quality I also didn't notice a huge difference visually with any of the options, and performance-wise, it sticks around the same performance for all options and all of the scenarios that I could find to film things. People driving by, different emitters in the world, I couldn't really see a performance impact for the most part, so you can set this to whatever you want really. Then to do with foliage, I expected micro detail quality and scatter density to have a huge impact on performance, however that wasn't really seen, and of course I didn't actually see much of a difference when it came to the foliage's distribution around the world. It may be different on other planets, but at least here there wasn't too much of a difference. Neither of course with performance either. Then fog blur had almost no visual impact and almost no performance impact either. But something that did have a performance impact to do with fog was the volumetric fog option. Between low and high, there was practically no difference and no visual difference, but when we moved from high to ultra, there was a performance impact of about 5-6%, to however there was almost no change visually. I assume it's because of a change in the lighting engine, the fog refracts and shows light more true to how it should be, but anyways, it's barely noticeable, at least in most cases, and for the performance impact, I definitely would recommend staying away from ultra. Then ray traced specular reflections. I tested with low, high, and ultra ray traced specular reflections resolution, and for the most part, there was almost no difference in performance between the ultra and low options when it came to ray traced specular reflections. I also couldn't find a great place to see the difference visually, but in the few that I tested, everything below ultra had no performance difference and a very minimal change in how things looked. However, when you're moving up to ultra, there's quite a big FPS hit and of course a huge gain in noticeable different information visually, coming at the cost of 3-4% to of your FPS. Yes, that's a pretty big tax to have, but you can see just how much information having the set to Ultra actually adds. Then the thing that actually did have a huge impact on performance with ray traced specular reflections was the ray traced specular reflection resolution. Ultra and very high look the best, and anything below that you'll see the quality drops off quite dramatically. Performance also mirrors the same things. Very low to medium has a small to no change in FPS, but moving to high and to ultra has about a 5% FPS difference between those options, so in total, you'll see about a 10-15% to difference in your FPS as you move from high to very high to ultra, as that's where most of the impact comes from FPS-wise. As for what you want visually, it's your preference really. As for performance, I wouldn't really go anything above medium here. It's just too costly. Then BVH quality, I couldn't really see any difference, and no matter where I tested it, there was no performance difference as well. Depth of field has almost no performance impact, however, it is an interesting one, in that when you have this set higher, hair, especially in the foreground, looks a lot cleaner and more separated from the background. I definitely recommend having depth of field set to high rather than anything low if it doesn't have an impact on your system either. Motion blur is entirely user preference and there's practically no performance impact, so I didn't really bother benchmarking it here. However, it is completely based on what you feel. Here we can crank everything from 0 to 10, which is fantastic, but most of it seems to happen around the 5 to 10 mark when there's a huge increase in the amount of motion motion blur. It doesn't really feel all that linear. That being said, if you suffer from motion sickness and things like that, you're probably feeling something now looking at the screen flying around, but of course I'd recommend turning off motion blur completely if that's someone like you. Then moving to the spotlight shadow quality, each option makes shadows noticeably sharper, 
and there's a huge uneven quality drop when it moves down to low. My system had almost no difference in performance between these options, besides a very small drop when I moved up to Ultra. Then Spotlight Shadows, also again almost no performance impact, maybe 1% at most, but that's almost margin of error. However, as you can see, oddly, this seems to affect more than just Spotlight Shadows, maybe I'm wrong, but the menus in the background in the cantina here, they seem to go completely dark and occluded by shadows, at anything lower than many, so that's a little bit weird. Then shadow quality, there's almost no performance impact or difference between these and almost no impact visually either. This may be a bug with the review copy of the game, but usually shadows have more of an impact than nothing. Ray traced contact shadows also had almost no FPS impact and a very, very small visual impact, if anything. Moving on to terrain tessellation, it's incredibly difficult to see this kind of thing change when it comes to textures and qualities. As the world is constantly changing, the sun colors changing, the clouds overhead are changing the brightness and color of pretty much everything, but for the most part, there is a visual impact with this setting when it comes to terrain merging into other terrain types, etc. But overall, between low and ultra, there's maybe a 2% in your total FPS. Then shadow proxies are supposed to load lower quality models to have faster shadows calculated from them. They'll be less accurate, but for the most part, I didn't really see any visual difference if there was one at all, but the performance impact was noticeable at around two-ish percent. So I'd recommend having this option turned on. Then RTX direct lighting, this had a massive impact on performance, but even the developers know that as well. The review copy had frame generation disabled, so it wasn't able to be tested at all. And this was one of the options they mentioned was still being worked on or the finishing touches were being put on it they weren't confident in it and of course that shows him as the performance is horrible when you have the set to anything more than the lowest possible option don't take these results as final but these are what i got anyways between off and ultra your fps is quite literally halved then object detail is almost no difference no matter how high you crank this or how low you crank this when you're far away from objects in the world but that is to be expected between 100 and 400 there is a noticeable difference however that's slowly increasing in quality the higher that you go when you're much closer to objects like things in front of you in the world as you can see here in the fruit it kind of changes a little bit from the low to the highest option and of course if you have enough vram there shouldn't be too much of an impact on your performance but here they actually is. Whether I'm far away from objects or really close to them where I'll actually see the difference, there's about a 4-5% to FPS difference between the lowest option and the highest option, which seems a little bit large for something like this, but anyways. Extra streaming distance also had a relatively big impact on performance, about 4-5% to as well between the lowest and the highest option, and you can see that a few objects load a bit further away the higher that this option is pushed, that's to be expected. For the most part, there's a consistent drop in FPS for each step that you move up, so you'll just need to weigh in how much you actually want to see, as there's not too much that changes in the world, but there is a big performance cost. Then lens and cinematic effects quality had almost no performance impact, but at low, you can notice things like people in the foreground have this weird blurry halo around them that doesn't seem to appear at any higher option. So, of course, I'd recommend keeping your lens and cinematic effect quality at anything more than low, so medium is probably as low as I would go here. Moving up, there was, again, almost no performance impact and very little visually. Then, moving on to more ray traced settings, ray traced diffuse reflections had almost no performance impact, while the ray traced diffuse reflections resolution was set to high or any other option. But, Ray Traced Diffuse Reflections Resolution did actually have a performance impact and a rather big one. Medium had me at around 68 FPS, High at around 65, and Ultra at around 58, so a drop of 3 and 7% is quite massive. For the incredibly small visual difference that you'll get between these options, raising this isn't good at all. Then Destruction Quality, I couldn't really find a place where this would consistently happen, but in fights with grenades and things like that going off, averaged over 2 to 3 attacks attempts, there wasn't too much of an impact when it came to performance. And of course, visually, it's difficult to notice the difference of things exploding and being destroyed as it doesn't really happen all the time. 
So you can usually have this option cranked higher and it should be fine for you throughout most general gameplay, exploring, etc. But of course, if there is something that I missed, do let me know down below. Then environment reflection quality. Again, these last few options were very difficult to find cases where they'd actually appear. And this one was very difficult as well as there aren't so many super shiny objects in the world that are also metal. I used the takeoff scene as well as entering hyperdrive as the ship is quite reflective and you should be able to see the environment moving around it lights, etc. And of course, as it's loading and unloading a ton of data moving between worlds, you'll need to just ignore the 1% lows here and focus mainly on the FPS, but that was mostly unchanging. I was pretty surprised about that, especially entering hyperdrive as there's just so much going on, but I guess it doesn't really have too much of an impact on this ship itself or your performance, that is. That being said, wherever I changed this quality option anywhere else in the world, again, there was almost no performance impact, so this is probably the best example that I could come up with. Then, deformable terrain quality. I couldn't find examples of this anywhere in game. On sand, on snow, there's barely any footprints left behind, nothing of the sort, and I really could not find where this actually applies. Performance, no difference, and of course, visually, no difference either. I couldn't find a place where there were deformable things such as sand and snow, etc. In them, there was just no effect, no footprints, no nothing. Finally, spotlight projection resolution. Again, very difficult to find a place to test this, so I just tested this in a place with quite a few lights. The cantina, again. And of course, there's almost no visual impact with almost no performance impact either. Then with that, we've run through pretty much all of the in-game options. Again, you'll find a link down below to an optimized guide showing you everything you need to know in a very condensed format. This was more for you to just see the difference between these options without having to test each of them individually, as it did take quite a few hours of recording, then more hours of editing, titling, and putting this whole thing together. So do let me know down below if you enjoyed this. These types of videos take way longer than the usual videos to create. So yeah, there's that. Thank you all for watching. My name has been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.